Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera from your Purdue Alumni Association bringing you another glimpse of things from on campus. And today we're going to pay tribute to our ninth president, Stephen C. Beering. Um, Dr. Beering passed away this past April and more recently they've had a memorial service for Dr. Beering. And I just thought it would be a great opportunity for us to pay an additional tribute to talk about the impact he had on campus, provide some perspectives and some impressions and some stories actually from my working with Dr. Berry and I was on his cabinet for four years and it was really reinforced as I was thinking of this at my desk at home and I came across this memento. This is the memento from Dr. Berry's farewell dinner, May of 2000, interestingly enough called Lasting Impressions. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today, are lasting impressions of Dr. Bering and Jane Bering both. And so let me begin just by saying he was Purdue ninth president. He uh, followed Dr. Hansen, and uh, uh, Morton Gisty then followed Dr. Bering uh, as president of the university. Uh, Dr. Bering had a significant impact on the campus and the look of the campus. And so as he arrived, the automobiles were quite dominant, asphalt parking lots, uh, were all over. He and Jane both really made an effort to start to make the campus pedestrian friendly. So we started seeing more parks, more malls uh, on campus. If you think of the engineering mall in front of Hubdi Hall, um, that would probably be our best example of some of the changes that occurred um, uh, during his presidency. You also think of the parking lot between the Union Building and Hevelin Hall. Uh, now it's Academy Park, and if you go over to uh, the west side of University Hall, it used to be a parking lot, now that's Founders Park. So uh, uh, quite a positive impression uh, that he, uh, he brought to this campus. Uh, a lot of major buildings uh, occurred during his tenure from 1983 uh, to the year 2000, 17 years as our president. So from the MSWE building to the Mullenkopf enclosed practice facility, Hillenbrand Hall, was all built during uh, Dr. Bering's uh, tenure. Probably my favorite, though, has to be our residence hall food service master plan and our residence hall facility master plan. I was director of residence halls and graduate houses at the time, uh, soon to be vice president, and we really needed a master plan to uh, really accommodate today's student. We just couldn't do things the same old way, and so Dr. Beering was 100% of an advocate with a financial plan and what we wanted to do, got the trustees convinced, and also got state funding. So all those things kind of came together. And so these days we have these nice dining courts that our students enjoy, a lot of air conditioning in our facilities, very, very nice facilities, really all had a lot to do with Dr. Beering. Um, another thing Dr. Beering did, kind of uh, interestingly about us, that when Westwood, their home was being renovated, they actually lived here in the Union Building uh, almost a year or so in one of our suites as that facility was being renovated. And living here for a year, he got to know the staff, many of them by their first name. They would meet and greet and talk every day. He had a great relationship. Really, the Union became his home. And so when it came to making him aware of some projects that we needed done, for instance, our leaded glass windows, here in the, in the Great Hall and all around the, the Union Building. The leaded glass windows really hadn't been refurbished since they were put in, in the 1920s or so. And uh, very expensive, you have to take them out section by section, take them to an out of state uh, uh, person who renovates them and brings them back and puts them in. He was a, of a significant help in getting them renovated. Also the restrooms here in the Union Building were tired and inadequate. He was uh, significant again in providing funding for those. Just really had an eye for the aesthetics uh, of this building, this wonderful building, and really the, um, the, the campus itself. And he, he loved this building. He loved this building. In fact, he loved to, uh, he and Jane loved both to entertain. And so we attended many a banquet in this particular facility. The ballrooms are just down to the right here. Some of our favorite activities were the President's Council pre-game luncheons. So before every home football game, there was a luncheon hell. We all put our gold coats on, gold sport coats, 
We went to the luncheon and uh, had a nice meal and heard the president speak and, uh, and then listened to a glee club sing. He was a gifted, gifted speaker. In fact, from his first opening uh, acceptance speech where he uh, accepted the challenge and welcomed the opportunity, I think were his words. And that was kind of a clue to all of us that he was really a gifted speaker. In fact, he could quote the Bible and Albert Schweitzer off the top of his head at any given speech that he might be giving uh, during commencement. He actually would give a different speech for each commencement ceremony. And uh, those of us on the platform who were sitting through six commencements were most appreciative. Everyone was good, uh, really did an outstanding uh, job with that. Um, he was also appreciative of, of uh, things within the residence hall, things that were going on there. Uh, his sons actually lived in our halls and ate meals there. And so he became very familiar with our halls uh, as he, would, he and Jane would come out quite often and, and uh, have meals there. And uh, that's what helped him understand kind of the residence hall plan, you know, that we were kind of uh, uh, going through, you know, at, at those particular times. And then lastly, let me, let me talk a little bit about his style. And the style is that he would uh, have cabinet meetings every Monday morning at 9 a.m. So Monday mornings, 9 o'clock, we all converge on Hubby Hall. This is when the, uh, the trustees meeting room was still connected to the president's office in Hubby on third floor of Hubby. And so we would all gather, there'd be 12 to 15 of us there. And uh, we just went around the room. Each person kind of talked about um, what was important in their particular area, what was coming up. Just a great way to kind of know each other and become familiar with each other. Of course, he shares uh, what was on the agenda at his level also. But then the thing that most of us liked was right after the meeting, you got to see each other. And boy, we could eliminate so many phone calls just by talking to each other and getting answers to questions and that sort of thing. Just a great way to cultivate loyalty. And speaking of loyalty, one thing that he really liked to do was to give Minuteman pins. And maybe some of you still have some of these. I really covet mine and have it in a safe place because he would hand these out as, a, as a, an example of loyalty. In fact, he has one on right here on his lapel. Um, a lot of staff across the campus uh, really learned to wear that with pride and still have them uh, as a way to, to kind of uh, remember the loyalty in Purdue and, and you're working for the family of Purdue. Uh, we're now going to jump around to several sites on campus. Uh, that uh, were impacted by Dr. Bering. Our first one is going to be in Bering Hall. We're going to head over there right now. Okay, here we are. We've moved across campus and now we're in Bering Hall, the home to the College of Education and Liberal Arts. In fact, the building uh, originally was known as Liberal Arts and Education, L-A-E-B, LABE. I think many of you probably would refer to it as. Um, but upon uh, Dr. Bering's retirement, they renamed the hall for him, Bering Hall. And it's been that ever since. I suspect many of you had classes in this facility. One of the uh, cute stories about the, uh, the building that I've heard from his grandchildren are that uh, since they had the last name Bering, it just didn't seem to work for them. And so they, they like to call it Grandpa Hall. Whenever they referred to their friends and looked at their schedule, they had a class in Grandpa Hall today. We thought that's pretty clever. And so uh, uh, a nice portrait of Dr. Bering, and we're, uh, we're, we're glad that uh, this facility was named for him. So on to our next site. Okay, we're outside now. As a matter of fact, the wind chill is below freezing right now, so I uh, got the heavy hat and the gloves on. Uh, we're outside, but we wanted to make sure we stopped at Stephen Bering Drive, uh, at the corner of Stephen Bering and Joe Tiller Drive, as a matter of fact, right by ross Aid Stadium. Uh, Dr. Bering and Jane were huge fans in the sports program, rarely missed a football game or a home men's or women's basketball game, and so the athletic department wanted to make sure they paid tribute to him and name the street after him. Uh, one of my memories of Dr. Bering is uh, before every home basketball game, he made it a point to walk down the stands and talk to Gene Cady and Sharon Versip, shake their hand, wish him good luck uh, just before the game started. Uh, wanted to make sure he uh, knew that they had his support and the entire athletic program really benefited from, from that. I know Morgan Burke uh, always spoke very highly of Dr. Bering and his support of the sports program. 
So uh, uh, we're so glad this happened for him. Uh, now on to the next site. Okay, we have moved to the west side of campus, the very west side of campus, right off McCormick Road to Westwood, home of the president. Uh, some of you may recall that uh, R.B. Stewart, this is his home originally, um, he added on to it and donated it to the university. Arthur Hansen, Arthur and Nancy Hansen were the first president to live here, and then uh, Jane and Steve Beering followed in 1983. Um, the Beerings loved to entertain. In fact, they, they preferred sit-down dinners. And so they needed more space, and so they actually uh, extended the dining rooms out. In fact, there are two 100-seat dining rooms, one on top of each other, extending out into McCormick Woods up in, the, up in the house here. And just a beautiful setting. And I think once or twice they actually had two banquets perhaps going on at the same time. Again, loved to entertain. Jane was the ultimate hostess. She, uh, the rumor is she actually kept track of who attended and who they sat with and uh, what they were served as an entree that night, trying not to repeat the same table settings and entrees in the future. So I uh, really wanted to make it a special uh, experience, which it was. Uh, in fact, I can remember the first time Diane and I came here at Christmas time. And we uh, were out on the, uh, in the dining room with the uh, senior level leadership of the university. A wonderful time started snowing and a deer walked across through the woods. It's as if they said, cue the deer, and the deer walked through. It was just really, uh, obviously we still remember that. Uh, it was just a, a, a great impression from that evening. Uh, but more than that, the Beerings would uh, open up the house each fall. In fact, every new faculty and staff member, or every service member was invited to the, to the house. It took two days uh, to actually go through. There was a receiving line but every new staff member actually went up to Westwood, went through, met Dr. and Mrs. Beering, got to look around and have some cake and punch and that sort of thing, and, uh, and then leave. Just a great way to welcome people to the university. And then a spe another special activity that some of my staff, uh, former staff, still talk about is uh, when I was the head of housing, we had the Big Ten housing officers meeting up here, and they graciously opened their home we had representatives from all the schools. And so these are the uh, administrative staff, the dining staffs, the residential life staff, facilities folks from all the Big Ten schools. We had them up in Westwood for a nice meal that night, hosted by Jane and Steve Beering. Uh, again, they're still talking about it, and that was 25, 30 years ago. Just a very, very nice evening. So uh, uh, a lot of memories here, a lot, of, a lot of times coming through the gate and going up to Westwood. Um, but really uh, representative of the Beerings and the hospitality side that they brought to campus. On to our last site. Okay, we have arrived at our last site and it's the uh, top of Slater Hill and it's the grave site for Steve and Jane Bering. Um, there are actually only four people buried on campus. One is John Perdue by University Hall and then right over here is David Ross. It's the grave site of David Ross. David Ross, who was a trustee of the university, a benefactor, and uh, really did a lot for the university, and Ross Aid Stadium being part of that is there. Steve and Jane are here. Uh, we're so thankful that they were able to be buried here. They really wanted this to be done. It was not that easy to get done, but uh, through the various approvals, uh, they did, because they just love this place. In fact, uh, one of Steve Bering's quote, quotes that uh, near the end of his term was, you know, it's not a job, it's, it's a life. And so his life was dedicated to the university. And so how appropriate to be buried here with some inscription that he wrote himself about the meaning of what Purdue is all about. And so as we conclude this, um, uh, I'm reminded that it was Dr. Bering who was uh, influential in uh, establishing the Purdue Hymn. Uh, the Purdue Hymn, the song itself had been around, but uh, the Purdue Hymn uh, was not being used as, as it could have. We needed an alma mater. We actually never had an officially established alma mater, and he suggested, why not the Purdue Hymn? Uh, the trustees approved it, and I suspect you've heard the, the uh, Glee Club sing it many times. Uh, uh, just a, a, a nice tribute to the Beerings. And so as the song plays, um, I just need to add that we are all so 
uh, indebted for the positive impact that Steve and Jane Bearing had on this university. And uh, we thank them so much for the lasting impressions we all have. Hail Purdue.